Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a toy camera or a Lomo photography effect in Photoshop. If you like the look of a toy camera or want to achieve that look, which is kind of like a degraded lens, like if you're using a plastic lens or something really cheap, you're going to get some chromatic aberration and certain effects in photos, which you can actually recreate in Photoshop using various filters. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do that. In the course of it, you'll probably learn some other tips that you can use in your own projects. And if you wanna follow along, I have included all the assets in a link in the description of this video. So go ahead, download those, and then let's dive into Photoshop. All right, let's go to File Open. I'm gonna open this degraded JPEG. All right, so let's go ahead and make a copy of our layer. For this, we're gonna use the lens correction, but rather than correcting, we're gonna uncorrect this. So let's go to custom here. I'm gonna change the remove distortion. I'm gonna add one there. And then I'm gonna take this to minus 100 and this to plus 100. And then for the vignette, I'm gonna add about 15%. So something like this, and then I'm gonna hit okay. Now, honestly, the amount that this has done it, you can hardly even notice it. But if I go up here and just click on lens correction again, it's gonna run the same effect over and over again. And the more we run it, the more it'll become obvious what it's doing, because you're gonna start getting that fringing on the edges, you can kind of see it right there. You can also start to see here in his clothes, getting that nice effect. Let's do it a few more times. And obviously the amount of times that you do this is going to increase how strong this effect is. But I think something like that is pretty nice. Now, if we zoom in here on any of these edges, you can see we're getting this cool rainbow effect that's all going away from the center of our image. Now, the next thing I wanna do is blend that a little bit. Um, and to do that, we're going to go to filter blur and we're going to use the radial blur, but we're going to put it on zoom instead of spin. And then I think 10 is enough. Let's just hit okay. You can see that's just going to blend those effects together, but you'll also notice that it has gotten rid of our grain. So I want to add a little more grain back into the image. Um, there's a lot of ways to add grain. Um, I'll show you kind of the first way that I did grain, and that was just to make a gray layer here. So 50% gray, fill that, um, and you fill with option delete. And then go to filter, noise, add noise. And here I'm gonna do uniform noise. I'm not gonna make it monochromatic. I kind of want colored noise on this. Um, the amount is fine, 50. Now, if we zoom in here, it's a little too harsh. So we're just gonna go to filter, blur, and add one blur here, and then put this on overlay. There you go. Um, if you want to kind of make this less sharp, you could also just add one more blur. You can kind of blur it a few times until it's about the effect that you want. I think maybe even one more blur would help us here. So something like that. Obviously you can take down the strength of the effect by just increasing the opacity or the fill. Um, generally for kind of overlay type layers, I wanna make a habit of adjusting the fill. Overlay in and of itself is not one of the special layers where opacity and fill is different. I have a whole separate tutorial on that, which I'll include in the description of this video, but kind of making a practice of, in, of adjusting the fill instead of opacity on these kind of blend layers is just good practice. Okay, next thing I wanna do is just add some film grunge to this. And in my libraries, I actually have some nice analog grunge. So I'm gonna take one of these 
Maybe this one here, dirt film. And let's go ahead and make this bigger. And I also want to invert this. And I'm going to put this on hard light and then just take the fill down. Give us some nice scratches. And then I'm going to go down here and grab one of these frames. Just put that here. I'm going to also put this one. I'm going to put this one on linear light. And as you can see, with the linear light, anything that is darker than the neutral gray and anything that's lighter than neutral gray will show up on my image. But everything that's neutral gray will just act as a window to the layer beneath. So it's a good blending mode to use if you've got something like this frame. All right, so there you go. Last thing might be just adding a little bit of a light leak on top of here. Um, I have a whole pack of light leaks, which you can get. Um, I'll include a description of this in the, um, sorry, I'll include a link in the description of this video. You can grab one of these and I kind of want, I think, maybe I'll grab this one. I'm just going to put this on screen. I'm going to put it behind these layers here. I'm actually going to even put it behind the film. So something like that I think looks good. And then finally, we can just add a curve on top of the whole thing. Um, maybe on this, I'm going to go to my red, kind of pull up the bottom, give it a little bit more of that old film look, pull down the top, and then kind of do the same on the the blue layer here. And that's just going to give it more of that old film look. And there you have it. That's before and that's after. Now, because this is so many steps, I actually have turned it into an action. Um, if you go in to the Nuclei Actions, and I'll include a link to purchase them, go down here, I have one called degraded lens. And basically that takes the steps required, including the multiple applications of the lens correction, and turns it into one action that applies all those, applies the motion blur, and applies the film grain all in one shot. So all you have to do is run the action, then you have it. And then from there, you can make any adjustments that you need in this case. I might just make it a little bit bigger like this, and then I can turn on the rest of my layers just the same. So there you have it. That's how you create that toy camera Lomo effect in Photoshop. And hopefully you learned some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use in your own projects. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment, share this video. And here's some other tutorials that you can check out. I'll see you next time.